What's going on guys? I hope you've been feeling the spirit lately and today I've got a little bit of a trick that might help you improve your accuracy and become a better shot. So this will probably, for those of you that watch the channel, this will probably be the last talking video or bow instructional video that I do for the year because our hunting season is pretty much getting ready to start. Tomorrow will be youth day and I'm going to go film my pastor's daughter and uh, see if she can kill one. And then Monday I'll start a three day bear season that I'll be bow hunting. Uh, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, and then Saturday will be the opening day of bow season. It's pretty much time, that time of year, to be hunting. Uh, so this will probably be the last like bow instructional video. I have a video that goes over my bow setup for this year, that goes over all the specs and stuff of everything. Um, and then after that it'll be nothing but hunting videos. And then here and there I'll splash in some hunting videos of last year before I upload uh, bow videos from this year. But anyway, without further ado, let's get right into the good news because I'm about to make you a better shooter. A lot of people know or don't know that the way that you grip the bow is super important. One minor tweak in pressure and the amount of pressure you're putting on that bow can make a huge difference downrange, especially when you get out to 20 plus yards. Uh, 10 yards, it might not be that big of a difference, but once you get out to 20 plus yards, you're looking at the size of a deer at that distance from just a little bit of difference in pressure. A lot of people know that as you put pressure higher into the grip and more into this part of the grip right here, you are going to impact significantly lower than if you put your pressure low. And most of the time you want to put the pressure in the lower part of the grip. A lot of this is a flatter grip. Um, this is a bare ospel longbow. I prefer that flatter grip. If you don't know about bow pressure and how it affects the shot, they don't know. They might think that they're doing something else wrong when in reality it's the pressure and the way they grip the bow is not consistent and that minor tweak of pressure is affecting the arrow downrange. Most people will put pressure low because that's the best way to do it. It gives the, it gives the bow, it allows the bow to do what the bow needs to do. Also, by opening your hands toward the target and not putting, and not grabbing the bow or putting pressure backwards like that, but rather letting the bow do what it wants this bow is top heavy so it wants to rock back but once you put pressure on a string it'll stay in it'll stay in its place and you can just hold it like this a lot of the times people will be missing and it will be because of their pressure so how do you make sure that your pressure is the same every time i've dealt with this issue for a long time especially whenever i'm just out shooting and i start to get fatigued or if i draw and hold back for a long period of time after I draw for, after I'm drawn for about five seconds, I'll catch myself starting to grab that bow and really hold on to it because I'm shaking real bad and I'll demonstrate. But as I draw back, even with my hand open to start with, as I sit here and I start to shake, I naturally kind of want to roll my hand forward and grab it with my fingers. So releasing at different times during my shot will cause differences in where the arrow strikes the target because of the pressure I have on the grip. So how do I keep everything consistent and make sure I do the same thing every time? Well, the way I like to do it is I call it the pinky method. But as I come up and I come to draw, as I, I keep my hands kind of open, and then I draw back and I keep this pinky bent. Instead of keeping my hand open like this, I'll basically close this pinky. And when I close that pinky, over time as I start to become fatigued, I'll put pressure with that pinky into my hand. That keeps me from gripping the bow. With my pinky being tucked back, it keeps my hand in the same position and it keeps myself from gripping the bow. If you, it, it, it gives you a reference of pressure 
And because that same amount of pressure that I want to grip the bow with, I put in my pinky pulling backwards, it keeps me from grabbing the bow and I just put pressure with my pinky finger. And that keeps me from being inconsistent. And I found that a lot of the times, even if I'm super fatigued or if I have to draw for a certain amount of time, normally when I would collapse as I released, I can still execute a good shot because of bow pressure being better and me not gripping that bow and messing everything up. But that is one big secret that I've never really shared before because I never really thought about it until here recently I started thinking and I'm like, I started not, I started keeping my pinky open or resting it on the bow. And what it did is it caused my hand to come in a little bit as well by taking my pinky and touching the bow with it, it caused my hand, because naturally it wants to sit right there, but I was laying it right here, which started making my hand become more straight rather than out to where I normally like it. So basically what I'll do is I'll keep that pinky in and I can hold it. All right, so I'm gonna shoot a couple shots down that way and uh, kinda give you the reference of what I mean. And then I'll put the camera out at different angles so that you can really see the pressure in the grip. I hope you could kind of see what I was doing there. By keeping my pinky finger in, it kept me from putting pressure on the bow and rather it set my hand in the same spot every time and it kept me from putting pressure with these fingers and it allowed the bow to jump down, to jump forward and rock back because it's top heavy. So instead of me grabbing a hold of it and trying to control the bow, I let the bow do the work and let it jump forward and rock. It keeps me from allowing human error when I can just let the bow do the work and I don't have to worry about having any human error in there. Now, sometimes some people like to hold the bow like this and that's fine, a lot of ASL shooters. Uh, the longbow, like real D-shaped, heel style longbow guys they really like to hold the bow like that whatever works for them that's fine that's the technique of how to shoot that bow that is completely fine but for a lot of guys like that shoot like me or shoot like uh, the majority the majority of people shoot that way with their hand out and putting pressure low it'll keep you from grabbing that bow and it'll set a it'll set a precedented point for you to grab the bow every single time and as you can see it aligns my fingers right against the back of the bow there right down the middle of it and then i can just keep my pinky tucked and i can just barely lay my fingers on the back of the bow and it keeps me from also putting pressure in the bow i'll just lay my thumb there but anyway i hope this helps you guys and i hope this helps somebody out there um again this will be the last bow video for the year other than that, it'll be hunting videos from now on. Um, yeah, thank you, Lord, for a beautiful day. I hope we can get a deer tomorrow and I can get a youth day video because that would just be awesome. Um, and then, yeah, uh, pick up a t-shirt. Still available, philspirittv.com, or you can go to the link in the description. Um, you can follow the Instagram or all the other stuff there. And, uh, yeah, other than that, I guess that'll be the end of this video. Like, subscribe, it helps out a lot. Uh, check out my Amazon affiliate links in the description if you want to. Uh, a lot of the products that I use are down there in the description. Um, and then that'll also help keep me being able to do this and help keep videos rolling out. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you have a beautiful day. Uh, God bless you and keep on feeling the spirit.